Hello everyone, my name is Shelby and this is the series where I reveal what is inside these mystery pottery molds I found on Gumtree. Hello and welcome to part 38. I can't believe we're nearly at the 40 mold mark. Like we've nearly done 40 of these mystery molds. It feels like it's taken so long to get here, but at the same time, I feel like it goes so quickly. Um, this mold is really cool. It's another one of the molds where it has one side that you pour, tip it out, and then you flip it over and do the other side. Um, so it's a two piece, uh, item. <laughs> I nearly said what it was before I've revealed it. It's a two-piece item. So if you're cluey enough, you might have figured it out already um, that it's something that goes with something. <laughs> so I open it up to reveal da, da, da. A gorgeous little jar. It is so lovely. So this mold didn't have much encryption other than spice jar. And then it also says J141 carved into it, but it doesn't have like a little label like some of the other molds. So it was lucky that it did have the spice jar. But looking at this and holding this, it is a rather large spice jar. Um, I don't know, maybe it's just me and <laughs> I have those tiny little spice jars. Um, so it does feel quite big to what I'm used to. But if you have big spice jars, then they, this is perfect. I almost think that it could work as like a little sugar jar. Like when you have friends over for tea and coffee and you ask them for sugar, that little jar that sits near your, your little kettle. I think that this would be perfect. Um, so my biggest fear right now is that this is another littered piece. So I've done a lidded piece before, but I fired the lid separate to the piece. But what happened was the piece warped. And the only reason I fired it separately was out of fear that the lid would adhere to the piece in the kiln um, because I've seen horror stories of that happening and I'd hate to, <laughs> to make this jar and then have the lid sealed onto the top. So as I was sort of carving away the excess, I found out <laughs> I don't know what I did wrong, but the lid just would not sit on there. So I had to do a bit of trimming um, to make sure it's sat properly. But since pouring a couple more, I poured them a bit thinner and the lid ended up sitting on them perfectly. So I've got one that's got a little bit more of a trimmed finish, um, but that's fine. It's This is part of the process, right? Is that we learn how thick things should be, how long we should pour them for. Um, and when I say how long I should pour them for, how long, that means how long I leave the clay to sit inside um, the mold before tipping out the excess. So I said before that it sort of feels a bit big for a spice jar to me. Um, and I also didn't want to fall into the mold <laughs> of, I guess, like falling into what it says it should be. So I thought about what I wanted the piece to be for me. And it kind of reminded me of like a secret little lolly jar. Um, it kind of reminds me of Miss Trunchbull's little box of chocolates, how she just keeps it for herself. It sort of reminded me of one of those little sort of treat yourself jars that you sort of hide away somewhere just for you to have a little snack on. And I was thinking about lollies and what sort of um, shapes and bold colors are the most nostalgic. And I instantly thought of candy hearts. So I began sketching those out and I sketched out with a grey lead because the wonderful thing about grey lead is if you make a mistake like here, um, you can rub it away gently and also use a sponge to clear it off. Um, I use grey lead because it also burns out in the kiln. Um, so if you want to figure out for this piece, for example, I wanted to make sure that I had a really balanced, even um, negative versus positive space. So space where there's no color versus space where there is color and also making sure that the hearts were pretty even and symmetrical around the piece. So um, the candy hearts concept, I was thinking about how they all have like these really sweet little love notes. So I got some little love hearts from grazing lane sweets a candy shop in australia um so i got those and i got some color inspiration and marked out where i was going to put the color on each heart i also got the candy hearts because it's been so long since i had them that i couldn't even remember what 
um, what affirmations were on them. So I wanted to get a study and a look into them for research. I did have a munch on some um, to see which affirmations I wanted to use on the jar. So the colors that I use are a little bit more vibrant than the pastels of the candy. I find that the candy hearts are very muted in color. Um, so I kind of wanted to have something that was a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more poppy, more like the, the packaging that the candy hearts come in. So I start by adding my pink. So I'm detailing the lid with that little lip, um, I guess you'd call it, like the little turn detail around it. I'm detailing that with like a pink stripe and I'm also adding a little love heart on the little top knob um, of the jar lid. And then I begin by adding the yellow and then slowly fill in each color um, where I've mapped it out. I wasn't really sure how much color to add to these um, because the hearts are such a bold, vibrant shape um, and I'm doing six colors in total. I wasn't sure whether to detail the sort of like rims or the edges. Um, so with that jar lid, that was sort of my way of, I guess, filling in that negative space. So there was a really nice balance. I think with painting something that's a vessel, um, a 3D eye, Item, uh, you have to sort of think about not just what it looks like on a 2D but what it looks like all the way around it from the top from the side uh, what happens when you lift the lid off um, does it look consistent uh, with the lid on uh, does it look consistent with the lid off there's so much more that goes into placement of color when you're doing something that's 3D because it's not just a front on effect you're looking at the whole piece as a whole there's so much more surface that you need to consider so yeah i'm a little bit not sure um whether this is going to be too minimal or whether um whether i should have added some detail to the rims um whether i should have added more detail to the lid but at the same time candy hearts are a very um like a very minimal design in a way is that they've got the one color and then they've got the script um, text and outline sort of detail in the red um, so I'm hoping that that's going to be enough to sort of make this piece feel like it's complete because sometimes if you don't fill in enough of that negative space so the space where you leave white or the almost like the background um, color on this um, sometimes it can feel incomplete if you don't add enough so hopefully I, i've hit the nail on the head given that um this has so much text which i'm filling out now um, in gray lead again doing it in gray lead so that i can get even spacing and know exactly where i need to put the letters because i'd hate to do it too big of an s and then not be able to fit the rest of the word in the heart and also the hearts are slightly different shapes because they're hand painted um, i also think that with the text it sort of makes it really a bold statement that it doesn't really need much more so yeah we'll see how it goes um always a learning curve every single mold um and also trying to do different designs and different styles of work so i begin adding all of that uh text on the candy hearts and this was actually so fun and so satisfying to do so with everything i have to add a couple of coats so you can see me doing that here is that i add my first layer and then i go back over all the letters and do another coat um, because the red is quite a bright pigment um, i found that i only really need to do two coats with it now i get a lot of questions um, in these videos or over social media uh, for people that are wanting to learn pottery um, and not really knowing where to start because there's so much information out there and I really want to do a video where I explain everything um, or well a little snapshot into it but what I'm using here is called underglaze um, underglaze is like your almost like a pottery version of like an acrylic paint. It's a little bit more powdery um, and it dries a lot quicker. Um, so I water mine down a lot so that I can have a really smooth, um, I guess like a flow like consistency. They come really amazing as is, but I water mine down just so that I can do that really beautiful outlining work, um, really fine line work as well. Um, the only thing with watering it down is you do have to 
put it on a lot thicker and you have to do a couple more coats to get that pigment really strong. And it takes a lot of practice to get your pigment right and to know that you've applied enough paint. Um, so this is under glaze. The, the stuff that you put over the top, so uh, the, the stuff that I dip it into at the end, that is called glaze. So glaze is a little bit less controlled. Um, you don't have the same precision as what you do with an underglaze, but I can explain that in so much more detail in an actual video. Um, but I, I tend to use a lot of underglaze because that's where you can use, if you wanna do illustrative work on your pottery, underglaze is best for doing that. So it goes under the glaze. Um, or under no glaze if you don't want to use glaze. <laughs> so this is the glaze here. I use a dipping glaze. It, this is just a clear gloss. Um, I can't really recommend something because you've got to get the glaze that suits your clay best. And that depends on where you're located. And I don't want to give advice if I don't even know what clay you're using. So I dip that in and it I can tell it's a good consistency when I can kind of see the indent of the design still a little bit over like a faded color, but that is just my glaze again. So it just depends on what um, you're using. Sometimes this clear dipping glaze can be a blue color. So it just, it really depends on your location. But if um, you happen to be in Australia and happen to use the same one as me, then that's how I find mine comes out the most crispy. So earlier, I, I keep saying so to like interject into a new subject. So I've <laughs> it's just my common word. Um, but I was talking about how I was really fearful of the jar lid sitting because I'm going to fire the lid on top. And I'm the reason I'm scared is because the glaze could be present on this little lip and it could adhere to the lid, meaning I can't remove the lid because when the glaze transforms in the kiln, it turns to glass. So it fuses, it fuses like a glass. So I'm very, very nervous. The reason I am actually firing the lid on top this time is because last time I tried a lidded vessel, um, the lid warped differently to, it sort of moved and shrunk differently to the piece. Um, and so my other fear with these is that they might warp differently again and not sort of go in harmony together and they might actually end up sort of cracking each other because um, I, I have seen horror stories so I am very nervous about this um, I can confirm I was anxious about it all night I was thinking about them all night worried that they were going to break or even like I wasn't sure how the air was going to escape out of the the hollow jar so I was really nervous but it's time to open it up and see whether these lids stuck to the base of the jar. Opening up the kiln and the colors are so lovely. I love their vibrancy. I am feeling really nervous because those jars look really in heart, like the, the lid and the base look really in harmony with <laughs> each other that I feel like they may have fused so because they're still quite warm I pulled them out with a cotton cloth and I decided that now is as good as time and any to see if those lids will pop up so here we go oh <laughs> the shock in my face when it came off uh that's one out of one um so each one I sort of gave it a little bit of a gentle push because I know that sometimes it can get a little bit stuck two for two <laughs> and then the last one so Spoiler alert, the last one really would not come off. Um, I was getting really nervous, so it, I just could not get it to budge. And then I was carrying it over to my bench to film me getting a knife in there and cutting it away because I couldn't see any glaze in between the gap. And it came off. I didn't even get to film it. It just popped off and it was all fine. So I am so proud of these because my first littered piece that has worked perfectly in the mold series. So I am very, very stoked and very, very pleased with how these look. Aren't they cute? <laughs> I think they are gorgeous. I actually really love the coloring. I think 
the negative versus positive space, like the color versus white, I think works really lovely, especially for this sort of sweet tooth inspired piece. Um, they are all very similar in what they look like, but I'm walking you through each one anyway. Um, so all the different little love notes are so gorgeous. All the lids sit so nicely. It's so nice to be like, I made a lidded vessel. Um, I'm sure if there's potters watching this, they can agree. But when you make a lidded thing and it fits and nothing warps and it all sits really nicely, it's such an achievement. So I'm really proud of these. Um, and I think in future, where I can, I'll be firing the lids on top of the pieces so that they sort of move together. There was no evidence of cracking or you know, warping or anything like that. So really, really happy with these. Um, and the detail is so gorgeous. I think that they're a really nice, sweet addition to um, a secret little stash drawer. And I also love the little, um, I didn't talk about this before, but the jar lid, I really love that little button knob at the top. It is so cute. And I love the open me um, on top. It reminds me of like the Alice in Wonderland um, little jars where it's like drink me. I really like that. Um, so I put the candy hearts in it to compare it and I noticed that the color of BFF here is perfect to the packaging on the love hearts I got from Grazing Lane Sweets. Um, I, oh, I, I'm really happy with it. And then here is an example of one of the candy hearts to show where I got the reference from, um, and how much they match up. It, oh, I really think that these are cute and really different to what I've done before and I'm really proud of them but I guess we better test it out with um, some some candies some lollies so I got uh, a pastel mix from Jess at Grazing Lane Sweets um, to sort of <laughs> color match in with these jars I opened them up um, and had a go at tipping them in uh, it was so gorgeous you can see one in the back there overflowing with lollies but they are the perfect size <laughs> to hide away some treats. I really like this mold because there's so much potential and so much versatility with it. I can think of already so many ideas. What do you think of this week's reveal? Let me know in the comments below because I'd love to hear your ideas, but make sure to like and follow for part 39. Here's your sneak peek for part 39. Make sure to tune in next week to see what's inside this mold.